Hi, I'm Amy Eisenstein, and welcome to Ask the Fundraising Expert. Today, I have my friend and colleague, Jay Love here, the co-founder and CEO of Bloomerang. Welcome, Jay. Hey, great to be here, Amy. Thanks so much for joining me. Well, good. It's a welcome addition to my AFP International Conference. <laughs> yes. Well, we're going to be talking about data and donor retention today. Right. And so I just wanted to get us started with, you know, why you think donor data is so important, especially for major gifts fundraising. Can you talk about that for a minute? Well, I think if you take a look at the what the data is telling you, mm -hmm. it provides so many insights because in the past, major gift fundraisers had to rely a lot on just past giving that a, an individual or an organization or a foundation had with them. Yeah. Now we're able to measure this magical thing called engagement. And engagement tells us how engaged they are with your organization and hopefully gives you a basis of comparison to the engagement level with your organization versus others that they donate to. Yeah, talk more about engagement, especially how a database helps us with engagement. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, we follow along uh, the work of uh, Professor Sargent, Adrian Sargent, uh, mm -hmm. for the engagement. He actually helped create the algorithm for this. And I always, after we present it to people and talk about what the algorithm includes, a lot of people say, well, can I tweak this or tweak that? And my famous comeback now is, as I said, well, the algorithm is actually stored in a bank vault in Atlanta right next to the Coca-Cola <laughs> recipe. So yes. we, we can avoid that. If, uh, yeah. But uh, basically, we're measuring about 30 or 40 factors ranging from their giving, how often they give, is the giving going up or is it going downward? Do they skip time periods for mm -hmm. us? And then their involvement with your organization. Do they serve on a committee, a board? Do they attend events? Do they bring other people to events? Do they, uh, uh, do they participate in a volunteer capacity for your organization? And then think about communications. Uh, every, if you have your email integrated with your database, every time you send out a mass email, you can see, well, does this person open it? Do they forward it to friends? Do they respond? Do they click through things? So those are all levels of engagement. Some of the really important ones that really spring the algorithm upwards are, do they reach out to you? Mm. Have they picked up the phone and called you? Do they stop by your office for a visit? Have, do they send you an email? Are they doing something that's not just in return to something you've done? Right. And you, being a fundraiser yourself for many years, you know, if someone contacts you, it's a whole different phone call. That's right. A whole different Absolutely. meeting. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, but that, of course, depends on good data entry on the organization's end to make sure that any time a volunteer does something or calls in or reaches out, that they're entering that into the database. Entering that or making sure that wherever that is being kept right now is properly integrated, whether it's just bringing some of the data over in an import mm -hmm. or actually connecting to the volunteer system because a lot of, you know, like social service agencies, people sort of swipe a card or uh, do their fingerprints when they come in or whatever. Uh -huh. Well, that data is already there and there's no reason now that so much of that's stored up in the cloud that it cannot be shared. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. yeah, that's really using technology, It really right? is going to the next step, and I think uh, we're gonna, people are going to look back in another 10 or 20 years and say, wow, those things don't share between them? You right. know, can you imagine? Think of all the apps that are on your phone. You know, we were silencing our phones a few minutes ago, and you think <laughs> of how much data is being shared among different items there uh, for that, and we all take it for granted now. Right, that's absolutely true. And so, Talk uh, a little more about what a development director does once they see that somebody's highly engaged and does it impact the level of the gift or the likelihood of a gift? What, what else do we know? Well, I think it's the biggest factor is the likelihood of a gift uh, okay. more than level. I think the level is impacted a little bit more on past giving, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what their, their habits are in that regard. Obviously, what their personal situation is. We were both talking a little bit earlier about our children, and you've got some that will be coming up and going to college. I had three that went through college <laughs> and then one through Harvard Law School and things. So uh, that changes your ability to give at different parts of your life uh, for that. So I, I think the other missing part of the puzzle is to also know what their ability is through some sort of prospect research or you know fact finding that you do that shows what capabilities they have in that regard. Right, no, great points. 
What would you say to somebody at an organization that doesn't have a sophisticated database or hasn't been keeping good records? What are the next steps for them or what should they do? Well, one of the things they can do is apply, apply some simple common sense techniques. Mm -hmm. One of the tests that I always tell people if they can't afford to go in our software, which I find hard to believe because it's pretty affordable, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but if they want to do that, take a look at their database and separate it into three sections and you being a major gift fundraiser will understand that. The first section are people that have not made a gift to you or supported you in any way for two full years. Okay. The next group is that their giving comprises 10% yeah. of your giving for that. And then the final group, as you might guess, is the group that's got 90% of your giving for that in the last 24 months. And then you've got a decision to make. Do we even keep the ones that have provided 0% funding? You may want to keep the ones that are previous major donors or previous mm. board members or have answered positively to a survey that they'd like to stay communicating with you. Right. The 10% you put on automatic pilot. And then you focus everybody's energy on that 90%. And you know what, Amy? What we've seen with our customers, if people apply that mindset to it, we always see that within two or three years, they might be able to double the amount of dollars being raised. Mm. Because it puts I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off. I just want to make sure that I understand so that everybody understands 90% of the income, right. which is 10% of the people. Yeah, well, you know, according to the latest data that we have from all the database vendors that share the data, uh -huh. right now, 88% of the funding comes from 12%. So it's just a little bit off the 90-10, but it's really darn close. It's it's even better than the old 80-20 rule that we right. always hear about. That is better, right? Yeah. And yep. so if you just focus on those top 10% of donors that are giving 90, almost 90% of the dollars, you'll raise so much more. That's right, because think about it. The average uh, you know, US citizen or person in, that gives in North America probably supports three charities. Yeah. And you've got to determine, they've got to, you've got to help them determine, is your organization going to be one of the three? And are you lucky enough to be one of the, maybe the two that they support in the form of legacy giving? Let's move on to donor retention. Let's talk about donor retention. Such an important issue yes. for nonprofits these days because, uh, well, I'll let you talk about why is donor retention so important? Well, because it takes so much less effort, so many less dollars to retain and keep an existing donor than it does to attract a new one for that. And then when you talk about donor retention, there's a few basic tips that can make it so easy to, to help it become a reality that you're improving it for that. For instance, most people don't realize there is a huge difference between first time donor retention and people that are given more than one time. Mm. It's like 23% versus 64%, so it's almost a threefold increase. So if more organizations would just help turn a first time donor into someone that makes a second gift, then they've, they've improved their chances threefold and that person's gonna stay with them for years and years and years. So a lot of the attention can be focused in on how do we properly thank a brand new donor and how can we have three or four touches with them in the first three or four months, the first 90 to 120 days. Mm. And most people don't ever stop and think about it. You know, the typical organization if they get a thank you letter out, they feel like they've done their job. <laughs> Wipe <laughs> off the brow and that's it. Right. Well, why not do a thank you letter? Maybe send uh, your newsletter with a post-it note saying, yeah, I think this article on page four might be important to you. Yeah. What if you pick up the phone and call them? What if you send a welcome kit? What if, toward the end of the three months, if you send a little two or three question survey saying, what part of our mission excites you the most? What would you like to hear more about? How can we involve you? Uh, things like that. Those types of things, you're separating yourself from 98% of the nonprofits out there. That's right. So if don't organizations would just understand that having that special plan for those first time donors to make sure that they gave that second gift, uh, then they could have them for life as right. opposed to losing them right, right away. Well, just like you and I, I mean, we first met each other, what, about three years ago? Yep. Okay, I heard you present, I came up to you afterwards, <laughs> and I said, I wanna to get to know you. And we didn't just have that one conversation, I sent you an email, we talked on the phone, we've even sent a text back and forth and all, and all of a sudden, a friendship and a relationship blossomed. 
That's right. And that's the same thing with uh, the donors. If uh, if the people will just try to, and even if you've got a large number of them, you can still segment into different groups and apply the amount of extra effort at the proper segment level. That's right. I think the analogy of a, a new friendship right. is a perfect one because that's ultimately what you want your donors to uh, be, is friends of the organization. And so after a first meeting you have to nurture that relationship and I think those examples that you gave were perfect a telephone call a personal note in addition to the tax letter it's not just about that sterile oh, thank you note. And it's, and it's and it can be so much fun because think about it I serve on about six or seven different nonprofit boards and I really enjoy my board service but most board members are very shy about being involved in the ask well Involve them in the thank you. That's Involve right. them in the building of the relationship. They are already excellent at that. Most of them are business owners or successful executives or whatever the case may be. Uh, and they're very good at building relationships. So let them do that part of the business. Yeah, it's uh, a perfect way to engage your board members in the fundraising process by having them involved in the thank you process. We're on the same wavelength here, Amy. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes we are. So that. Uh, initial retention is so important for long-term retention. Mm. So, so talk a little bit more about the long-term lifetime value that a donor has who stays as opposed to just constantly getting new donors in the door each year. Well, now you're talking right up my alley. My, <laughs> my favorite class in college that I got straight A's in was statistics. I took every type of statistics class. And when you just apply the mathematical formulas, mm -hmm. if you can move that retention rate up, uh, just a few percentage points, you know, five or 10 percent, the difference in the amount, the average donor stays with you five to six to seven years longer. Most people, as they stay with you, give a little bit more each time period. Very few people are legacy donors and haven't been donors with you for three or four years. So it opens up all these possibilities that you really have the lifetime value shooting up quite a bit. In fact, there can be a hundred to a 200 percent change if you move those percentages up just a slight amount. And I think the real telling part of that is, as you look at the, the dollars that are raised during that time period, is also the personal stewardship that they can bring. Think about who are your best table captains at a gala? Right. Three and four and five year donors. Yes. Uh, who are the best people to help you brainstorm with if you're doing a capital campaign? And, yes. and bring in additional people. I always refer to that as their stewardship or their soft credits. Mm. And in fact, Remember that engagement meter we were talking about in the software a little bit earlier? Yep. We give like four times the value for soft credit work than we do of anything else. It's even more important than their own personal giving. On your engagement meter, you, know, you give so much more credit, right. right? It shows that there's so much more engaged if they and are, involved. Think about yeah. it. I can write you a thousand dollar check or I can bring you three people that write you checks of equal amount. Right. The person that does that is engaged. It's sort of like the old, uh, you know, the old uh, chicken and the pig at breakfast. You no, know, <laughs> one's involved and one's committed yeah. you know, uh, for that. Well, that's the committed person. It really brings in those other folks for you. That's right. And it's such an important thing to talk about. I'm always talking about major gifts, but I think that sometimes I don't stop to go back to the beginning of when somebody got involved and engaged with the organization mm. and those new donors, the keeping them, the retention is something that organizations really need to pay attention to and right. focus on. Uh, I could not agree with you more. And now that we've seen it, some of my favorite emails and phone calls that I get are from our customers that have moved their retention rate up and you know a big milestone in the nonprofit world is to get it above 50 percent yes you know and then when we've got some customers that are in the 70s and they are just a joy to talk to about how they go about doing it and the difference between what they ultimately raise by having those increased retention rates is significant oh, yeah it's uh it's mind-boggling what that means over the course of just a few years you know when you when you apply just the pure math to it it's, it's a big major difference. And I know we had talked about a little bit earlier, you know, there's a huge difference in the nonprofit sector and their retention rates versus the commercial sector. Uh, any, any company executive that has customers that are not retained at at least a 90% level mm. would probably lose their job. But yet most boards and most executives are not even aware that their donor retention is below 50% for the lion's share of all the nonprofits in this country. 
Really, that is so interesting. I didn't know that it was so high for corporate. Why do you think it's so different? Um, other than maybe the board's not paying attention, what's happening there? Well, I, I think that in the case of uh, commercial businesses, you know, sometimes people go to a particular business because it's in close proximity to their home mm -hmm. or they've done it, but they know all the items that are involved in it. If you've purchased a car anytime in the last 10 years, you know there's going to be a survey coming asking about your satisfaction. Yes. But if I make a donation to a nonprofit, I maybe one out of 20 that will send me a survey ask me was I happy with my experience did I enjoy it what what would I like to know more about the organization you know that simple little tool of a survey is a game changer yeah I, I think what you said before is so important and it really raises such an important point that board members just by reaching out and touching a donor after a first donation or a second can have such a oh. big impact and Donors are not used to that kind of personal attention, so it really stands out, and it makes your organization shine. I think everybody should do it. Oh, I agree with you, and in fact, every one of your listeners out there that are watching this video, they can provide their own little test. Uh, one of the things I did for years and years and years, anytime I had a new employee, because my businesses have always worked directly with the nonprofit sector, anytime I had a new employee that did not work at a nonprofit, or had not worked with nonprofits in the past at a previous job, I would give them a $100 bill and I would ask them to go make 10 or 15 or 20 gifts to nonprofits and then watch what would happen as those nonprofits went about building a relationship with them. And or not, of course, not, right? Yeah. I mean, most and of them probably didn't. Yeah, and sure enough, five or 10 years later, I would have certain employees that were still supporting one or two of those organizations with their own money this time. Yeah, because the they were stewarded well yeah. and they were thanked and follow up. Yes, yeah. what yeah. a great story. Yeah, and every nonprofit should do that. I mean, can you think about it? Would anybody go open a new pizza restaurant in a neighborhood without trying all the other pizza restaurants? Never. But we so often are refrained from just checking out what, how do other nonprofits thank their donors, how do they build relationships by just making a donation. So they can try it with other local charities, but more importantly, try the big national and international nonprofits because you know what? They know how to do it really, really good. And with actually with some of my clients, I tell the development director, make a donation to your own organization and online and see how long it takes you to get a thank you note. Or yeah. if you're applying for a new job, I say, okay, you want to see how their development office runs? make a $10 donation and see what the response right. is. And uh, it's fascinating. They don't even know sometimes how their own shop works, right. which, is, which is sad, it's a problem. Well, it's, it's something that has always been sort of put on the back burner. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that this focus on what moves the retention needle moves so many of those things up to the front burner that people really find out that relationship is all about service and talking and just getting to know somebody. Good. Excellent. Well, any last tips on either data or uh, donor retention that you'd like to leave us with? Well, I, I think just think about the whole acknowledgement process, not just first time donors, but also people that have been with you for years and years and years. Are we making them feel special every year? And think about that. Think about in your own personal giving. If you give to three or four nonprofits, why is it that those are the three or four that you give to every year? Yeah. And there's got to be reasons, and just make sure those reasons come true for your donors. Great. Well, thank, thank you so you. much you. for being here. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. Now it's your turn to share. I hope you'll join the discussion and help others by leaving a comment below. Did this video inspire you to try something new? Do you have an example or story to share? Do you agree or disagree with today's advice? If so, please let me know in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to share it with your friends and followers. Finally, if you want to learn even more ways to supercharge your fundraising, visit my website, trypointfundraising.com. Join my list, and as a thank you, you'll get two of my most popular eBooks for free. That's the end of today's episode, but I hope you're feeling inspired and empowered. Thanks so much for doing your part to make the world a better place. I hope to see you next time on Ask the Fundraising Expert.